Hey, 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 you all. Welcome back to the channel. This is your girl, Nita, your favorite diva, and I'm back for another power review. This is Power, book three, Raising Canaan, episode nine, the penultimate episode. This is Loyal to the End. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you. I hope you stay. Um, let's see. Okay, so you guys, sometimes I break this up and I will do a recap, which this is where I have screenshots. And then I will have another video where we are naming MVPs. Um, we're saying turn up worthy characters, the creep ambassadors, um, the turn down worthy characters, the best monologue, the best scenes. I break it down like that. But for this one, this is your recap. So I'll be back on screen at the end of the video to give you my real talk and some predictions and some thoughts about the episode. So make sure you stay tuned to get those gems. Okay. All right. So without further ado, let's get to it. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Let the diva know you stopped by. First out where it left off. We are looking at another car that Marvin has destroyed. Marvin and Little Rob are in the car. They decide to go hit Unique up. So, what do they do? Unique actually has his son with him. The Unique is, um, Unique's son is in the car. But we see Marvin, like the black Rambo that he is, coming through, fucking shit up, wasting bullets. And unique definitely sees him and i know he's gonna swear revenge he is mad marvin did not protect his face he didn't say i mean just nothing and he didn't hit nobody look at all the crew that's there that's left and marvin turns his sights on little rob little rob was pleading he already knew where he went left i don't even think marvin knew that he snitched on canaan but he told him himself anyway and you know what that gets basically marvin was trying to tie up the loose ends to the blue caps but that should have happened way before little rob got pulled over by howard marvin then proceeds to clean up behind him he sets the truck on fire and leaves. Lulu is in the hospital bed. Looks like he's alive, suffering from probably first degree burns. Um, you see Jessica is there and you see Rock is there. Um, Rock is basically in her feelings and she vows to let Lou, you know, she vows to let uh, Unique know who the fuck she is. And that's what she says to Lulu while he's asleep. Stephanie shows up to the hospital. He is concerned about Rock. He hasn't heard from her in a couple of days. He said that Kanan told him where she was at. He, she looked annoyed. And basically, Rock is in her feelings. She's upset about Lulu. She's upset about Unique. She's upset about everything. And Symphony is basically a distraction. Even though all that stuff that she said about having a baby and getting out the game and all of this stuff right now is right now so she basically says you know you need to forget about me you know she disrespects him to the highest and then she's like you know i can you can find one of them college bitches out there to fuck go ahead and do that he was like fuck you and i was glad that he stood up for himself he was like fuck you but then he said uh tell tell marvin he can't trust tony and then that was it Meanwhile, while this is happening, Detective Howard is outside on a smoke break and he catches a glimpse of Unique's boys paying off a nurse that works on Lulu's floor for name badges and all this stuff to get into the hospital. They change up, they get into the hospital, but Howard peeped it. He peeped it from the beginning. So they're going in there to finish the job and as soon as they open the door, Detective Howard says... You better not breathe. Freeze. And he got to drop on the dude. So basically, Detective Howard comes to Rock and he's like, you know, you owe me. She was like, all right, if we're going to work together, then you're going to have to give me a pass. And he said, well, I'm going to need to speak to Kanan. I want to I wanna get with Kanan. So please just um, make sure I have that conversation with him. 
and he was like anything else i may need in the future you need to look out for that too and she was like what's that mean and i was like oop right there she listened to what is said and what is not said Kana shows up at the hospital and he sees that Lulu is in a different room. He was like, why is he in a different room? Rock said they they came to finish off the job. They came to the hospital and that's why he's in another um, room. Juke is visiting um, Nicole's grave. I'm like, poor Jukebox. So then um, Detective Burke rise up behind her and starts to you know give her a small talk and say you know come on let's go um have some shaved ice and um let's talk a minute now while they're talking detective burke started out on the right note but then she ended up having diarrhea of the goddamn mouth she started firing off questions after questions after questions basically talking about she a detective and she still gotta do her job juke was like huh hold up wait a minute nope a little bit later at the station, Nicole's mother and father comes up there. And I believe they're following up on what happened with Jukebox and saying that they wanted to press charges and all of these things. She was pressing Detective Burke and the father kept saying, lay off, lay off. You don't know this to be true. You don't know this. Stop it, stop it, stop it. And, you know, I, I kind of I mess with the, the father because he has a rational head. But then also, too, I want to know, do he have somebody in his back pocket or he's working some deals some other kind of way? I'm just wondering. I don't know. So we have Rock and Marvin at the chapel, at the hospital talking and you know rock ain't trying to hit the shit but then marvin was like let me say my piece let me let me get this shit out you know he's upset about how things went down and you know but it's family over everything i will die for you you can't tell me you know you can't l let somebody come attack my baby brother almost kill him and then try to tell me how mad to get you can't do that but then he also admitted to Rock that she thinks better than him. She sees things that he doesn't see. And then she, he also said, but I'm a man. I'm a man. So you got to respect me. They was like, whatever. She said, um, he was like, um, I don't work for you no more. And then she was like, uh-oh. So wheels turning. She was like, uh, I need you on my side. You know, she ain't got Lou. And so that's how she just kind of ran it and he accepted it they dapped it up and that was that we see here howard's meeting with his doctor saying that he's definitely meeting with his son tonight and that um you know we should be a step closer but he also informs her that the situation is delicate and we have to be careful and you know he was just making he was making sure to let her know that there was some caution we was proceeding with caution jukebox walked in and she was like i'm so sorry i heard about your friend baby i'm so so sorry and then so juke was like can i talk to you for a moment Rock was like, yeah, baby, sure, let's go. So she found a quiet room with nobody in it. And she basically, Jukebox was telling her about the police. Um, and all the questions she's been asked, how many times she rolled up on her. And Rock, you know, she put two and two together. And she trusts Juke, and Juke trusts Rock. And I believe that, um, you know, when she went to her and said, it sounds like this cop likes you. And then, so she was like, no, I know I'm, I know you're not a, sn a snitch or a rat or whatever like that. But sometimes police are good friends to have. So that is where I feel like the chess pieces are activated where she had to tap into her younger soldiers. <laughs> I hate to call them soldiers, but shit, that's what they are. She had to put them on the board. So yeah. Um, I also think she told her some other stuff off screen, which we see later on down the line when she's talking to Burke. Marvin tells is tells Kanan, it's time for your balls to drop. Rock said we need the soldiers out, strapped up, ready to go. We're going to war. He's like, oh yeah, word. So then he's teaching him how to clean the serial numbers off the gun. Then they sitting up there doing that. 
and he happens to be listening to some Smokey Robinson or something like that. I can't even remember. And he was like, man, I can't be listening to Smokey Robinson. He said, you probably got something in her room. I was like, you big damn dummy. I was just like, what is wrong with you, boy? Didn't she say he be going through her shit? Why would you send that man in her room? He get on my nerves. So, of course, Marvin going there rummaging through stuff because, you know, he, all he needed was an opportunity and time to do it. And he found this one locked drawer. You know, the locked drawer is going to be the one that's like, really, 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 I got to get this motherfucker open. So, he got it open, and that's what he saw. He saw her with the white girl. He found the tape of them singing. The only thing that Jukebox had of them left, he is pissed off. He's sitting up there processing the information. You know he is homophobic. He gets upset. He crashes the TV. And it's about to be World War Three. You remember Kanan in Kanan's narration? He was like this. You know that man desperate. Look at that desperate man. And that's exactly what he, he is. Just like unraveling at the scenes. Um, Burke she kind of ignores him and then he asks her the question and then she tells him that she's looking into these leads that she pulled over jukebox and she talking to her and asked her a couple of questions and he's like stop going into that why are you doing this why i mean he started flying off the handle then he gets indignant and say that he is going to get another partner because i can't trust you and i was just like what The most heartbreaking scene in this episode was Juke going into a room, finding it completely trash. She sees Marvin. He asks her about the girl. She said that um, she's dead. And he's like, it serves her right um, for not following the Bible or stuff like that. She got what she deserved and all this other shit. Then he proceeds to stomp on her tape. And that's when Juke actually spit in his face. She spit in his face. He slapped her. They get the tussling and tussling and tussling. Then next thing you know, he gets his hands around her neck and proceeds to choke her out like a bitch off the street. To the point where she could not breathe and she was almost turning another color. And then, just look at his face. Just look at it. Like, it was just so gross. It was just so gross and so disgusting. So, Juke, he finally lets her go. Juke is sitting there gasping for air. Marvin sits up there and starts crying after realizing what he's done. And Juke actually gets up and she walks out the room like a zombie. And the way she walked out the room, you know what? I almost thought she was about to go get them damn guns that Kanan and uh, Marvin was... was um messing with and she was gonna handle that but she didn't but that's just me mm, let's get ready to rumble. game time we in there she's like i'm putting it on the line I, i'm asking you to put a man on his back um, i need you to do this you have to do this And then so she lets him target, do the target practice. And she's telling him the importance of everything, what to do, how to do it. She gave him step by step, instruction by instruction. She said two to the heart and one to the head. She couldn't have made it more clearer. Then we go back and forth between her and Unique. And Neek got his soldiers, his crew, got them all riled up, ready to blah, blah. Lap them all up or whatever. That's what that's what he at with. I love the way they cut the scene between Rock and Unique going back and forth and how they're rallying uh, their teams. The the call, what we about to do. We putting it on the line. It's all on you, Kanan. It's all on you. you. I'm depending on you. And he rallying them up and go get it. Woman, man, child, kill everybody. If they with Rock, they dying. They done. I'm like, oh, Lord. Lulu starts to wake up. And then, of course, Jessica was like, oh, baby, baby, baby. You you up, you up. And he like, like, pipe down. 
and then he was like where is everybody so you know she about to be the new ride or die right girl you can have it juke meets up with burke and burke sees her all battered and bruised and she said who did it to you what happened she then tells Burke that um, Neek is planning on putting a hit on the cops because the cops actually took his re-up. He's really mad. He's about to hit up the cops and you're not safe. And she was like, why are you telling me this? She was like, because I don't want anybody else to get hurt. And then she was like, wait, how do you know this stuff? And then she was like, the streets is talking. And so basically, yeah, the chess piece is in motion. You know, Rock gave her that information to take back to the police. Like I said, that happened off camera. And so something tells me that something might have happened off camera with Kanan as well. But I'm not quite sure. But I'm thinking that might have been the case. Now, Rock started all that mayhem and had her nerve to go sit up in the church house with her mother looking like the devil in the red dress making sure she is being seen baby with the red dress you can't you can't you can't you know they the, the church people like that heathen came in here with that red on <laughs> so yeah so i think she was trying to get she was talking to her mom and they pretty much had a hard talk about um you know she's trying to say you know why i'm here you know how I got here in life, right? You know how, you know, my life led me here. And then she was like, that's your own doing. That is on you. You made your own choices. You your own person. And she pretty much absolved herself from that. And with the mistakes that Kanan keeps making, I suggest you do the goddamn same. Look at Marvin on, on car number three. He got the fresh Porsche. He pulling up on the little blocks that they got. Passing out gats. Passing out the hammers as Moochie would say it. And telling them to prepare for war. Alright, it's game time baby. Kanan puts Unique's jacket on to go meet this person that his mom said is in between his family survival and everything he looks he looks so confused so that's what makes me think that rock probably didn't tell him and then um you know how he gave this little speech talking about you know i, I thought long and hard of what i was gonna say but you know i'm, I'm just kind of nervous shit i just forgot i forgot then he was like wait that's not your jacket and then it's, it's starting to come come to him he's like Oh, your mother is trying to set you up. And this old Kanan shoots and shoots him not in the heart. Not in the heart. He shoots him in the fucking shoulder. And then we see um, Howard laying on the ground talking about, you know, you don't want to do this. And then next thing you know, it fades to black and we hear another gunshot. All right, so let's get down to some real talk. Real talk is rock had to end up using the players that she had lou was down marvin was out we have jukebox and we have Kanan. and as <laughs> as messed up as it is it is what it is and so detective howard already said that he didn't want to see nobody else he only wanted to he didn't even want to speak to rock no more he said i want to speak to kane and that's the only person i want to be talking to then going back to episode eight when um joaquin had followed rock and saw that she was fraternizing with the police and she had to quickly think on her feet and say that she uh shot the husband and you think i'm going to be sitting up there talking to the feds that afternoon she was like no he's in my back pocket but if you notice he pulled his, him and his whole crew pulled the guns on her so that lets me know that that could be a soft spot so if we 
can get that taken care of, then we can do that. Then Howard shows his hand at the hospital talking about he need Canaan for something else in the future. And you know, she like, you know, your little spidey senses get the tingling. She wasn't having that. She she clocked it. She was like this, oh, oh, okay. And so, you know, I think that this had a couple of double meanings. Um, loyal to the end. I want to say loyal to the end will be Detective Howard. Um, because he was loyal. He was loyal to Rock. Um, I mean, he helped her out jam after jam after jam. And yeah, I could see it going that way. I could also see it going loyal to the end because I remember Marvin was talking about loyalty earlier, like in the second episode or something about the dog. And I thought Jukebox was going to end up killing him, but that didn't happen. So I guess it could be a double entendre. It could mean a couple of different things. Um, we could be talking about Symphony. Um, she blew him off and he basically met it with the same energy. It's, Fuck you. But he still was loyal and told her, you got to watch out for, um, what's the bitch name? Tony at the club and so that could be loyal to the end so I think it has a lot of different interpretations and meanings and stuff like that even though it didn't really seem to come to pass in the episode I think um there was something there um what else um the conversation with jukebox and rock where she put the chess pieces on the board and figured out that she had to use her um the younger ones she obviously had a they must have cut it out it was an off-screen conversation where she said go feed detective burke this information because we didn't see that and juke doesn't know that i don't know how else she would know that information unless rock gave it to her now rock trusts juke because she got more sense with her but this one over here kana uh-uh she might have left all that to, you know, she gave him all of what, what she thought she needed to put the battery in his back to execute. But at the same time, maybe she did, maybe she didn't. We'll see in the next episode. But this episode was so good. It was so controversial. It was like, it made me so icky on the inside because there were a lot of different morals that were violated that just felt immoral and um but you know that's just the game that's the game and i think a lot of people take rock <clears throat> a little hard take take it harder from rock because she's a female and females are seen to be soft feminine demure um nurturing and stuff like that however comma when you're in this game you got to be 10 times harder than the niggas out here and, and that's just on period that's just how it works so you know people in their own biases they 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 see it and they just call her like the worst person in the world but baby i know you've seen plenty of men do 50 times worse than what she did and what you say about her i'll wait so anyway child that is all i got for real talk we're gonna get into it a little bit more where i'll break down the mvp the creep ambassador the turner worthy character the wild moment the best dialogue the best scene we get that in my review this is just a recap so make sure you tune in to the next review make sure you like comment and subscribe let the demon know you stop by and also thanks for watching and i'll see you the next one bye